She was in a hurry as her cab was patiently waiting outside. Jacob passed the bedroom and saw that she was struggling to do up her back dress. Yeah, let me do that. As he took to the zip, he noticed that she was wearing the blue bra that was bought on their honeymoon. I thought you only wore this on special occasions. He'd asked with a knowing smirk. Is this special it's New Year's Eve? She had replied frostily. She grabbed her bag and went to leave, and he had followed her to the front door. Abby, do you really have to work tonight, of all nights? Abby turned around to acknowledge Jacob's desperation. Listen, I know things haven't been right, and we need to talk. Have a good night, and we'll get it all off our chests tomorrow. Wait. Jacob grabbed his wife's arm and pulled her close to him. Can you not even kiss your husband goodbye? Their eyes locked, and just when their lips went to meet, for what seemed to be like the first time in months, the patient cab driver became impatient and flexed his bibbing muscle. She shook herself out of the moment. He tried to inject some comic relief into all the exhausting tension. They're never usually on time. But the excellent choice of a humorous line fell on deaf ears. She turned to leave, slamming the door behind her. As Jacob lay in the bath, the shower had dripped a cold drop of water every 10 seconds without fail. This didn't bother him in the slightest. In fact, he rather enjoyed the consistency which had been recently missing in his life. Plus, it helped him to reach sobriety, which consequently chained together the final missing links of how he came to be laying in the stranger's bathtub at 9am on a New Year's Day. After Abby had left, he went into the kitchen, just in time to see his friend Ginger upbraiding the fridge. Ginger Lightfoot was a skeletal, lanky figure of a man. Although friends at primary school, they had lost touch as teenagers when Jacob's family moved from Wales to London. Now both aged 34, Ginger had galloped into Jacob's life an unbalanced bearded substance abusing mess. He had hitched his way to London, tracked down his old school chum and, well, just never left his side. He had persuaded an unwilling Jacob to sign him up as a customer to his life coaching company but had long since stopped paying for his services by breaking down the barrier between trader and clientele with an alarming persistence. Jacob had given in to all the calls and messages, confessing to himself that Ginger had become a great pal again. Can I have a beer, Jiggy lad? As usual, Ginger was oblivious to awkward atmospheres. My life's falling apart, Ginger. I can't think about drinking right now. Ginger had ignored the plea, just like Jacob had ignored his. Look, the only responsible thing to do on New Year's Eve is to get off your trolley. You're not making any sense right now. All right, just a couple. Uh, we've got to figure this thing out. Jacob had given in too easily. Oh, sure, buddy. Whatever you say, Ginger gingerly replied. He armed himself with two beers, a full bottle of tequila and two shot glasses. They made their way to the living room just in time to witness the familiar scene of Jacob's pet Alsatian pricking her ears up and hurriedly leaping off the settee. Why does Bex always run away when I come near her? An unusually sensitive Ginger had pondered as they slumped onto the couch. It beats me. Jacob muttered under his breath whilst he enviously glanced towards Bex freely speeding away. You know what, Jakey? You and Abby will sort your issues out. You're made for each other. Ginger unconvincingly enthused, attempting to lighten the mood. Thanks, mate, but it just hasn't been the same since you started working at that bar. I know something's going on. It's her manager, Chuck. I've got a bad feeling about him. Ginger took advantage to what he thought was Jacob finally coming to his senses. He stood up and quietly, and great gusto You need a wake up, Jacob. You've got a great house, a brilliant company, and a nice haircut. Not to mention a handsome beast of a best mate. Mm, but you're married to Medusa. Don't talk about it like that! Realising across the line, Ginger slumped back down to the sofa. Okay, I'm sorry, mate. Listen, when the shit hits the fan, well, you've got to fight, because uh, otherwise, Jakey, you'll get covered in shit. Right, thanks. I'll, I'll remember that. Jacob said, confused at the remark, realising that I uh, wasn't getting anywhere. Ginger put his serious voice on. All I'm saying is, you haven't been yourself in a way or not. Just think, you're a goddamn life coach. 
You're paid to sort out other people's messy lives. But you need to sort out your own once in a while too. Well, I guess that's why I've sorted yours out so well, isn't it? I mean, you're a drug-abusing, out-of-work window cleaner, and you've just turned up tonight with a bin liner full of your clothes. Jacob dryly quipped. Are you kidding me? Jacob, you saved my life. Without your advice, I'd be on the streets, he protested. Yeah, but Ginger, your landlady kicked you out today. You are on the streets. Ignoring the dig, Ginger replied with a compliment. You're the best at what you do, Jiggy. Everybody knows it. And may I kip on your sofa for the next week or so? Jacob ignored the compliment and request of a favour. Well, you seem to be full of advice this evening. What do I owe you for this consultation? Love, Mr. Murray, is like a bird's nest. There's always some fucker waiting to swoop down and steal what's yours. Think about it. Obviously, this vulture, Chuck, has been preying on her, waiting for the right moment to pounce and steal your nest, your bird, and sit on your eggs. My, my eggs? Jacob questioned, now extremely bewildered. Yes, your eggs! Now, what I suspect we do is head up to the bar, pay them a little visit, and catch them out. Ginger, we can't do that. I'm, I'm probably being paranoid anyway. She hasn't invited me, and she'll be furious if she thinks we're spying. All right, well, let me tell you this. Your recent lack of enthusiasm has led to a lull in clients. Your friend's disappearing, and now it looks like it's affected your marriage too. Uh, I hope I'm wrong, pal. But don't you want to find out for yourself? Come on, prove me wrong. Jacob glanced over at a blown up photo which hung on the wall of him and his wife on their wedding day. Suppose I need to know. He agreed. His vocal cords dragging their heels in. He could be tonguing her right now. Ginger pointed out with a kind of calm tone that suggested he'd won the argument. I'll get changed. Jacob realised it was time for immediate action. When he came back downstairs in the one suit he owned, he found Ginger's attire to be a very quiet taste. Oh, not the foxy purple jacket, not tonight, Ginger. If I find my wife cheating on me, then I want to come across a man of integrity. That's hard to pull off and it looks like I've got Huggy Bear from Sarsky and Hutch behind me. What have you got against the foxy purple jacket? Ginger argued. It's legendary. This belonged to a roadie of Jimi Hendrix, who, might I add, said Jimmy once vomited on it. With that, he picked up his Takeda and proudly smirked. The next thing he remembered was falling out of a cab with Ginger and clumsily entering the watering hole where Abby and Chuck worked. Once inside, he had stumbled towards the bar to majestically fight for his estranged wife, whilst Ginger had Michael Jacksoned his way onto the crowded dance floor. There was no sign of her or Chuck anywhere. He'd asked the barman where Abby was, and reservedly he'd given the address of a house party she and a few of the bar staff had scampered off to. Jacob remembers how odd it was that she wasn't working like she said, but instead had gone to a house party. He awkwardly shuffled his way to the dance floor and easily found the only person dancing alone, Ginger. Just as the crowd screamed the 10 second countdown to midnight, he approached his footloose friend. We're leaving! Jacob had stubbornly shouted. Come on, mate! We're only just getting started here! Ginger had retaliated. But Ginger, we're going to a house party filled to the brim with orgies, whiskies, and hardcore drugs. Jacob had lied. Happy New Year! Ginger had hastily replied with a wide smile on his face. The boozy pair had fallen out of another extortionately priced cab in the middle of nowhere and had woozily marched up the stony driveway. With puffed out chests and all the dignity they could muster, they stomped to the rhythm of a pounding drumbeat that boomed from the house. I'm gonna kill the bastard. Ginger angry spat out before tripping headfirst into a bush. Why, how kind of you, Ginger? Jacob had slurred back whilst overpressing the doorbell with an eager finger. An equally sloshed lady answered the door. She had an alarmingly deep voice and an alarmingly confrontational tone. If you're here for the party, there's no more room. You don't understand. We're here to take vengeance on a cheating wife and a playboy barman. Hmm. Okay, you better come in then. Hmm. But we'll have to find something more comfortable for you to both slip into. The burly lady man laughed as they both nervously entered the house. 
Once inside, they had noticed a lot of butch ladies dancing. Jacob had a vague memory of wigs, makeup and earrings being thrown to him and Ginger as they passed hallways and different themed rooms with what seemed like hundreds of sweaty bodies. Abby was nowhere to be found. Nobody had heard of her, and because of the heavy European dance music being pumped out of the stereo, they often couldn't hear Jacob's pleas anyway. The hours passed and Jacob and Ginger lost each other in the heat of the dark, loud night. As Ginger crowd surfed in one room, Jacob passed out in another. The shower head was still dripping that same cold drip onto his head every 10 seconds. Jacob snapped out of the reminiscing. He knew what he had to do. He stood up and placed his feet onto the beige mat. He calmly unlocked the bathroom door and entered the hallway with all the grace and anticipation of a panther eyeing up his prey. He reached the door in question, gently pushed the handle down and quietly pushed it forward. Jacob Murray witnessed the naked Abby Murray calmly dozing in the arms of a snoring Chuck Brookstein for a split second only, but it may as well have been for a thousand years, acting as armour his eyelids shut down tightly. He stepped back into the doorway and gently closed the door. 